Hi, I'm Lou, and today I'm going to show you how to build this motor. Let's take a look at the parts we'll need. Various screws, two nails, two washers that fit nicely on those nails, some half-inch PVC piping, two PVC half-inch caps. This is called a PVC cross. It's like a T, only four-way a 3 8 inch by 4 inch threaded pipe two magnets these are out of an old disk drive but whatever kind you have the stronger the better um, here you can either use angle brackets you would need four of these or preferably if you can cut metal this is a nailing plate you just bought one piece and you can cut strips out of it and it has holes in it some stiff copper wire that kind of holds its shape. This is actually electrical wiring out of a house. Some really thin wire. This stuff has just got varnish on it. It has to be shielded wire though, like this, and or with plastic coating like this. The thinner the better, and quite a bit of it. Um, some batteries, some 2 by 2s First we want to cut two sides off our four-way connector. You can use any kind of hand saw. I'm going to use the band saw. Next, you take your 3 8 inch pipe and stick it in through the cutoff side. And you want to bang it through with a hammer. Tap it back and forth until it pretty well balances. Next, cut two pieces of pipe that are about two and a half inches long. If you'll notice, right down inside the cap, there's a tiny little divot. You want to get a drill bit that's slightly smaller than your nail and drill right into that divot. Next, pound your nail in from the inside of the cap through with a hammer. And use something else to tap it all the way down. Now we finish assembling our rotor simply like this. Next we need to start wrapping our wire. Um, I want to start it here. You can either tape it on like that to hold it. Or I tried to drill a tiny little pinhole right there because I had a tiny drill bit. Um, I'm going to stick it in like this and start wrapping it around. And this needs to be a one layer wrap all the way from here down to here. Now that that's wrapped, we're going to come down here and wrap around this metal piece a lot, just a bunch of times. Just go around and around and around and make it probably that thick. Now after finish wrapping this side, you want to slide over to the other side and it's extremely important that you wrap this one in the same direction. In other words, you're going around like this, over there you also want to go around like that. So over and then keep going the same direction and just fill up the other side the same way. Now with this second one wrapped, finish off by coming back and wrapping around a single layer on this side that ends here and matches that side. Next we need to sand all the varnish off all the way around on both of these. A uh, one inch belt sander would come in really handy here. Next using pretty much any kind of tape, tape the top half of this bare wire. Just wrap it around like that so you got it's covered on top all the way across. But it's not covered on bottom. So it's bare down here and covered up here. And on the other side, do the same thing, only cover only the bottom. Next we need to build a seven inch square out of two by two. So cut two at seven inches and two at four inches and 
should be into a seven inch square like that. And then what you want to do is pre-drill holes in from here and then put them together with screws. If you don't pre-drill this, this wood will split. Next we need bearings for the rotor, which is going to mount right here. And so you take this strip of nailing plate and cut off a piece and screw it on right here so this is allowed to spin on both sides. If you don't have a nailing plate or the ability to cut it, just use your angle brackets here. I'm going to take a piece of straw and cut it off like this and just put that on both sides. And there's our rotor spinning. Next for our brushes, take two 18 inch long pieces of copper wire and bend them in half. and squeeze them down to really tight. Now drill a hole right in the center of this to where this will just shove through. Now loosen your side screws and tip this piece out a little bit and then at about an inch and a half over from each side drill a hole that's not too deep and then put screws in there and tighten them down to about that far. Okay, these two screws should have a flat part underneath because we're going to use them to trap down a wire to the wood. And now we're going to need to drill two more holes here and put two more screws right below these just like this that are going to be used to hold a rubber band. Now from the inside shove your brush wire through that hole where it just sticks out on the other side and then bend the wire flat and wrap it around the inside of the stator and around this screw and tighten it down so the brush wire is sticking straight up. You're going to need to do that here, obviously here, then on the other side you do the same thing and attach it here and here. Now we need to make all the brush wires look like this, a loop and then a hook on top. So you do that by taking and putting the hook on and then just grab it and loop it over. We we'll have to work with it to get it exactly right, but something like that. Now take a two inch long piece of copper wire and bend hooks in the end, in both ends. So it looks like that. And then you want to take a rubber band, little rubber band, double it over so it's about that big, and hook your copper wire on there. Now come under your stator, hook onto that top hook, and then put your rubber band around the screw at the, at the bottom. And now you have a flexible brush. Do that for all four. Adjusting the brushes is critical for a fast running motor. What you want to do is have the brushes just barely touching the commutator so it conducts an electricity but not pressing on it enough that it makes it slow to spin. Now screw in your homemade or bought angle brackets on the sides here. Now make sure your magnets are pulling towards each other like this and put them on both sides on angle brackets. For a power source, I'm using four 6-volt lantern batteries all tied together for a total of 24 volts. Hook your negative battery terminal on one side, your positive on the other, and let it rip. Now let's take a quick look at how this motor works. With the plus terminal from the battery over here, both of these brushes become plus, and the minus terminal makes these two brushes minus. This permanent magnet has been installed such that the north side is facing in, and this magnet is installed such that the south side is facing in. In this current rotor position, electricity is flowing from the plus side through the brush, through this commutator, around the coil, and then out this commutator and brush to the minus side. Electrical current flowing around this metal pipe turns it into an electromagnet and because it's flowing around in this direction 
this end of the electromagnet is north and the other end is south. This north pole is repelled by this north pole and attracted by this south pole so the rotor turns like this. As soon as it gets there however the commutator changes the flow of current through the rotor so now because this is plus going through the commutator and coming out the other direction this side now becomes north and is repelled by this magnet and attracted by that one. It goes over again and then the process is repeats because the commutator keeps flipping the north and south poles of the rotor so that it keeps chasing itself around and around. Thanks for watching and good luck building your motor. If you'd like to build a simpler motor, please look at the video response right after this video.